Last time I gave you a homework and that was to derive the expression for the magnetic field at this point P due to a current carrying loop uh, which carries a current I. I hope you have done that. If you have not done it and or if you have gotten stuck somewhere, this is a video to help you to understand how we derive that. It's going to be actually simpler than what I did in my previous video when I calculated the magnetic field due to a square loop. You're going to see it's going to be much simpler. So what we're going to do is again take a small section of the wire. I'm going to call that section as having the length dl and then calculate at first the magnetic field at this point only due to that section of the wire. All right. So to do that, we're going to use the BUSOR. Here is the BUSOR. The BUSOR says that the strength of the magnetic field has to be equal to mu zero divided by four pi times I dl sine theta, where theta is the angle between the dl vector and the r vector, the length vector, divided by r squared. <clears throat> okay, so I need to draw a vector or a draw a length from here to there. So let's do that. Here is a line from here to here. And let's call that line as small r. And we know what small r is from the right angle triangle. Small r is it's just Pythagoras. It's capital R square plus Z square. Okay, and what's going to be the direction of the magnetic field? Well, you need to you need to do DL cross R. Remember that that the, that the that the direction of the magnetic field is in the same direction as DL cross R. Now notice that the DL vector is actually running out of the screen. So you see it's actually coming out this way. This is your DL vector. And your R vector is in this direction. So I think it's better if, you, if I show you the DL vector as this way. It's actually coming out of the screen that way. And so you really have to use your right hand rule and cross from DL to R and that crossing direction would look like this and this pink thing that I'm showing, which is crossing from TL to R, is actually coming out of the screen here and then going back in over there, okay? So if you use your right hand rule, then you will find that the magnetic field will point. Remember that it has to be perpendicular both to DL vector and R vector. So R is this way, so it has to be perpendicular to this, and it's going to be in this direction. So that's going to be the direction of my magnetic field at this point just due to this current element. And the strength of that, well, we know the strength of that. The strength of that is going to be mu zero divided by four pi times I dl, that's this dl, times sine theta, where theta is the angle between dl vector and the r vector. Now dl is running out of the screen, okay? And uh, r lies in the screen. And so any vector that comes out of the screen is going to be perpendicular to any vector that lies in the screen. So this is going to be 90 degrees divided by r squared, which is effectively this squared. That's r squared plus z squared. Okay, so that's going to be mu zero divided by four pi times i dl divided by r squared plus z squared. Okay. So far so good. It's time to integrate, isn't it? Can I directly integrate this now? Can I just add up all the magnetic fields through due to all the tiny, tiny current elements? Well, if you remember the video which I did last time, then this should tell you that no, you can't do that because before you integrate, you always have to take care of the direction. You know, here's a simple rule. Make sure when you're integrating some quantity that, that uh, uh, the direction of that quantity is the same for every infinitesimal that you choose, all right? In this case, the quantity is the magnetic field, and the magnetic field does not point in the same direction due to every single current element. For example, if there was a, if you choose a current element right at this point, you know, diametrically opposite current element, then in this time, this case, dl would point inwards. And because the dl would be inwards and r vector would be this way, this would be a r vector, and dl vector would be inverse. Now, if you did a dl cross r, you would now see a magnetic field pointing in this direction. And in fact, every single one will point in their own direction. In fact, can you see that if you if you were to draw all the vectors together, that's going to look like 
Um, what is this? It's gonna look like a cone, okay? Anyways, so we can't directly add them. So what do we do? Well, you know the trick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw all the vectors of db over here. So if you were to draw all the vectors of db, it's gonna represent so it's gonna represent something like this, okay? It's gonna be a part of the cone, you know, surface of the cone. So one vector this way, one vector this way, another vector this way. It'll all be a part of the cone. And the and the question now is what what do you think will be the direction of the resulting vector when you add up all these vectors? It's it's symmetric. This is mechanics question. Vectors question. If you have guessed that the answer would be straight up, then you are absolutely right. This would be the resulting vector. It makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, imagine there was a particle over here. This was some sort of a particle. And you can imagine these are force vectors. It is, it is being pulled in all directions with the same force. All directions, which you know, in a part of a cone, then you would expect that these uh, all the vectors would add up eventually making the particle accelerate in this direction, right? I mean, the symmetry tells us that. So the same case is gonna work over here as well, okay? So we know that the resulting magnetic field is going to be along the axis. And it's for that reason what I wanna do is, so I'm gonna, let me write that down. So the resulting magnetic field is going to be along the axis. Okay, and it's for that reason, all that matters to us is the component that is along the axis. So let's write down that component. So here is going to be the component. And this is the actual component. So I'm gonna put an A over there. And if this angle is theta, let's not use theta, I've already used theta somewhere. Have I? No, I haven't. I can use theta. Theta is good for go. So if I use this angle, if I call this angle is theta, then the component, you can use the right angle triangle. Uh, this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. Then you see that if you take cos theta, you get the adjacent side, which is the component which I need, divided by the hypotenuse. And that makes dBA, what I need, is just going to be dB times cos theta. Okay, so let's write that down. We get dBA, so let's, dBA is going to be equal to dB, which is this fellow over here. So that's going to be mu naught I dL divided by four pi times R square plus Z square times the cos theta. Well, what is cos theta? At first it might look like, you know, how do you calculate that? Well then, we have to use a little bit of geometry. If this angle is theta over here, look at this angle, that's going to be 90 minus theta, isn't it? Because the whole thing should add up and become 180 degrees. And you remove 90 out of that, then these two should add up to get you 90. And therefore, this must be, whatever this angle is, uh, 90 minus this angle. So if this was 30, this would be 60. If this was 10, this would be 80. And so if this is theta, this would be 90 minus theta. Well then, we can use triangles in this. Uh, angles in this triangle and that would make this angle theta You get that this angle would be theta and so now I can calculate what cos is Cos is just going to be the adjacent side that is going to be R Divided by the hypotenuse which is the square root of R square plus Z squared And this is along the axis and guess what for every single small piece that I'm going to choose all I need to think about is this actual component because it's only the actual component that adds up. There's another component which I neglected. The other component would be perpendicular in this direction, okay? This direction. And that component is going to cancel out. In fact, you know what? That component is going to cancel out with the magnetic field created by this diametrically opposite one. You know, these two are going to cancel out. And that's gonna, every diametrical opposite ones, if you choose, you will see that the horizontal component is going to cancel out. It's only the actual, the vertical component is going to add up. And so, you know what? We are good to go. It's because, because the actual component is all we need. And therefore, we can now integrate this guy. So the total magnetic field is going to be the integral of this fellow. So the total field generated by this current carrying loop, moment of truth. This is going to be our answer. So that total field, B, along the axis, by the way. So I'm just gonna write that along the axis. It's going to be the integral of this fellow and let's keep all of our constants out, you know? You have mu zero, that's a constant. I is a constant. R is a constant. 
4 pi is a constant. I mean, it's not changing. Every single element gives me the same answer. And you know what? Even this thing over here is a constant. I mean, look at it. Every single current element you choose, you're going to see its distance from the point P is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be the square root of r square plus z square. Yay! That makes this integral extremely simple. Because then I'm going to get now square root of r square plus z squared cubed. Right? You get this. And the only thing that remains inside the integral now is dl. So all I have to do is sum up dl. What, what, what do you get when you sum up dl? Well, dl is a tiny, tiny length of the current loop. And so if you add up all of that, you're going to get the entire length. Well, that entire length is the circumference. And that's 2 pi r, and we're done. That's it. So the magnetic field along the axis turns out to be mu0 i r divided by 4 pi square root r square plus z squared <coughs> cubed times integral of dl that is 2 pi r and that ladies and gentlemen is the answer so we're gonna get mu 0 2 i pi r squared divided by 4 pi square root of r square plus z square whole cube ta-da that is our final answer and that is going to be the magnetic field on the axis and if you have done your homework and if you've gotten that answer congratulations and if you haven't gotten that answer no problems hopefully you're able to figure out where you went wrong so you could see that this was much easier because of the circular symmetry than the problem which i solved so you know i was being easy on you by giving you that easy homework we're going to play with this equation a little bit more in the next video, so stay tuned and please subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Take care.